UB has always been kind and welcoming to me, and I'm glad to be back here. Um, just last June, I was here for the UB Peace and Arts Festival, and it's amazing to see so, much, so many people doing many great things here. So today, I'm going to talk about the commercialization of cultural content. The, the COVID-19 pandemic left us with something that we never expected we would get in this life, which is a lockdown. I mean, some of us have had one or two days of lockdown, but this spanned into weeks and months. So that left us with a, with a noticeable increase, with a noticeable, noticeable increase in human yearning and relations. We wanted to meet our friends, we wanted to go out, we wanted to see people. And as soon as the lockdown ended, there was so much more um, that people wanted to do. You know, young people were going to literary festivals. Uh, they were going to Darbas in cities like Kano, Katsina, and other places. Things that people used to think it was old and obsolete. So uh, that, that showed us that there is a market and there is value in our culture. It's not just an identity. It's something that we can do and something we can look to monetize. Just look at the cultural performance that happened here. It was so amazing. It was so beautiful, right? Many people enjoyed it, but I'm sure that those people just didn't, they didn't come here to do it for fun. They were paid. They monetized their culture, and they, they got money off it. So can we just go? I've, yeah. So how, um, yeah, this is just a, a rough slide that I made. You know, this was the, at the Hausa International Book and Arts Festival. Someone looked at Hausa and saw that there was no Nobody was doing anything about promoting and showcasing our culture in the house, and someone did an international festival. It was amazing. It was a huge success. So what is culture? Culture is a total way of life. Like we have heard in our primary and secondary school, we always see this. Culture is, a, is our total way of life. Our music, our culture, our food, how we interact with people. Yeah. So culture is us, and we are culture. Yeah, so Nigeria has over 250 ethnic groups and um, over 500 languages. We do so many festivals, carnivals, darbas, you know, it's, it's endless, the list. And it's so amazing to see that we are doing so much, but we can do so much more. We can promote ourselves, we can sell ourselves to the world. Nigeria is literally a, a tourist des destination that is waiting to happen. But we are not tapping into that due to some issues like insecurity and lack of government interest in that. So we can do so much more on that. So what do I define as culture? Culture is the document, documentation and transferring of information. To, uh, yeah, it's to possess the knowledge, information, or whatsoever that will be consumed by others. So just like the performance that happened here by those people, it is content because it's not everybody that sees that every day. So we can do so much more things like that that we can promote and sell to the world. Who has watched Amina? Like, I don't need to go into details about how bad it was, the historical inaccuracies, the language, the actors they used. You know, wh why did that happen? Because we chose to not tell the story of Amina. We allowed others to tell the story of Amina. And they told it in a way that it was wrong, but then we can't blame them because we didn't tell it. So how can we do better as a people, as cultural and literary activists? We have to do that ourselves. We have to just do stories on the shelf and translate them into movies, podcasts, and other things. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a funny story. I just wanted to, you know, just flash back. I will never forget this story in my life. Back in JS2, in demonstration, secondary school, Ahmed Bell University, Zaria, um, my, my teacher, Ms. Inze, who is Igbo, wanted to hear a lullaby in Hausa. And everybody, we were like 80% Hausa in the class, but nobody wanted to do that. Everybody was scared. So I was trembling, and I, sh I raised my hand. And I remembered one of the lullabies my grandmother used to tell me. So the lullaby went like this. 
Anka shara gwen gida unkwa anche niya Anka shadu king gida unkwa anche niya Anka shaja king gida unkwa So you just keep mentioning animals So it was when, when I finished You could hear a pin fall, from, fall in that class Everybody was dead quiet Everybody was silent And I, I received one of the loudest um, ovations in my life she was so impressed, she was so happy because there were females there and it was expected of females to do that. But I did that. It's something that I hold very there. And, you know, for, incidentally, that time I was the best student in Hausa. So that woman started to look at me as, a, as you know, someone who is vast in Hausa. So anything that she has about any question that she has in Hausa, she comes to me. Let's go. So how can our, how can our culture be content? It's really simple, actually, because content is something that people would want to consume. Imagine someone from the East who has never set foot in northern Nigeria comes to UB today and sees this. He's going to record it. He's going to share it with his friends, with his family, and stuff. So we can do this. We, can, we have the knowledge, and we have to do more to acquire the knowledge to say it correctly and do it correctly. We have to get the skills to do that. This is where technology comes in. We have to know graphic design and other skills that will complement the knowledge that we have to transfer it from just our heads into something that is visually and aesthetically pleasing. We have to, we have captivating cultural activities, dambi, buri, a lot of activities that we do here in other, in, in other Nigeria that we don't really take it serious, we take it for granted. Recently, I saw a documentary about hyenas, hyena man. Someone came from Lagos and did a documentary about it, and it was amazing. Everybody loved it. It is here, but someone had to come all the way from Lagos to do it. Why are we not doing it? So another thing is we have to get the passion. Like, some people can just be like, ah, this is Nana, or they're just making noise or doing that. Have the passion and then do all these things, and surely the sky is your limit. We have to promote our activities. We don't have a lot of cultural platforms. We have to do that, we have to build that, we have to do more. Just like I mentioned, there was the House International Book and Art Festival that held in Kaduna last year. It brought people from all over the world just to hear panels, to hear music, performances in Hausa. And we are also going to do that again this year, and next year, and hopefully till time immemorial. So we have to also package our thing. This is where Kanyewood comes in. We, a lot of us tend to insult Kanyewood because we feel like they are not posh or they, they don't do well, but this is where we come in. We have to you know, make it better. We have to promote what we do, our arts, our culture, our festivals, all that we do. It's packaging that makes the difference between a 10 Naira sugarcane outside and a 3,500 Naira sugarcane in ShopRite. Yeah. So, um, cultural content, this is just an example. This is the first article I wrote, the first paid article I wrote in my life. It's about Trimi and Tabaria, Pesta and Motto. You, you know that, right? So, this is something that I, I was just like, it's, it is in front of my grandfather's house. They used to do these things. And then someone was asking, he wants to know about things, the culture, the arts and crafts of Northern Nigeria. I walked down there, I wrote it, and I got paid. That was the first time I was getting paid for my writing. It felt so amazing. So if I can do that, why can't we do all that? Yeah, so what can you do? What can you and I do? There are cultural and historical documentaries. Like we can do a series on Amina, Baye, Jida, and the rest. People will watch it. You'll be shocked and amazed at the people who are actively wanting to know more about the Hausa culture. We cannot allow Boko Haram, terrorism, Abuki, and all the negative derogatory terms that are being used on Northerners to, be, to continue being used. So we have to, we can do this. It's very easy to do this. Let's go. So photography. I see a lot of Northern youths are tapping into this and it is really amazing. You see beautiful pictures of Aragungu fishing festival, mosques, the scenes, the uh, dance and other arts that we do and cultural activities. We can also tap into that and monetize it. While you're, while you're showcasing and promoting your culture, you're also getting paid for it. So we can do translation. 
I know quite a number of people here that do translation for national um, magazines, NG, NGOs and stuff. We can also do that so that we can get money off it while correcting all the mistakes that are out there in our languages. We have to tell our students, we have to see our language right, we have to do it right. Videography, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, we can do short videos, clips, animations, and the rest. Content writing, this is where writing comes in. You can write about your culture, your tradition, your arts, and get money off it. You cannot just wait for a government job and say you have to be employed before you get a job. There are jobs running around you that we are not typing, and we can do that too. You can be a tour guide. This is Yusufari. This is my second time of coming into Yobe State. I have always wanted to go to this place, but I hear that it's not very secure. This is this can rival Dubai. Look at this place. If we can pr properly package it and promote it, we will have tourists coming in from all over Nigeria to visit this place. So you as a citizen or a resident of Meduguri or Yusufari, you can be taking people around and be get, be getting paid for it. So you can be a cu curator also. Like the UB Book and Art Festival happened last year. There was a lot of cultural display there and people sold their works, their artworks, their paintings. You can also do international festivals, national festivals, cultural festivals that will bring about people, bring together people and also promote your arts and culture. So why do we have to do this? We have to do this to show that we are resilient. Especially here in Yobe, so many people, the first thing that comes into their mind when they hear Yobe is Boko Haram, or war, or insurgency, or something. By doing all these things, by this promotion and packaging, we can change the narrative. We can show them that there is beauty, and that people are bouncing back, we are forging ahead, that we are not stuck with the war and we are not being victims anymore. So cultural preservation. By doing that, by making money off our culture, we can also preserve our culture. Imagine doing a whole series on Amina and it's on YouTube. Unless the internet crashes, it's going to be there forever. People are going to write about it, people are going to document about it, papers will be written, essays will be written, and so much more. So we can preserve our culture while documenting it. We can, this is like the most important thing, this is job creation. Do you know the value chain of just being a videographer, a photographer, you have assistants, you have people working with you, you'll be teaching people, you don't have to depend on any, gov uh, any government job. You can, all, you can do all these things, you can write from the comfort of your room and get paid for it. So why do we have to wait? and be saying the government is not providing jobs. Even if it is not, let's do something ourselves. We can do all these things. These are things that are within our reach, and we do it perfectly. So in conclusion, why we need to, color, why we need to commercialize our culture is we, have, we will suggest our culture in doing that, we promote it, we we'll package our culture, we we'll change narratives, we we'll show beauty and diversity, we we'll attract tourism, investments, and goodwill, and then, of course, We'll make money.